my, about myself, uh, I am Lavdeep Singh. I am one of the barristers and solicitors, Canadian barristers and solicitors in Canada, and we operate through ACE Luxury Immigration Solutions in Dubai. We have an office in Mississauga, Canada, and we have also an offshoot in Pakistan, Islamabad. Our sole responsibility is that we are immigration lawyers and we give immigration solutions. We primarily are into either uh, student, uh, student immigration or business immigration. Benefits of being a Canadian resident, Canadian uh, uh, resident or a work permit holder or a citizen, you get access to healthcare, you get access to free schooling, you get a very safe social environment. The culture is multicultural society, people are very welcoming, no problems with, at all. If you want to run a business, you can do it very smoothly, no red tapeism, no uh, anything in government departments, every system is very smooth. So yes, again, I reiterate the same thing, it is a welcoming country. Trends and types of Canadian immigration. Now, Canadian immigration is divided into four or five segments, like student immigration, like skilled immigration, business immigration, economic migration. Now student immigration is something when a student comes, he studies there, he secures a work permit, later on he becomes a resident. After being, becoming a resident, he stays there for three, he lives there for three years and five years and then he becomes a citizen. That is a student way of uh, coming to Canada. Skilled immigration is when you are at your prime, that means you are around say 30, 31 years of age, you have had three plus years of work experience. You have had a post-graduation uh, and you have uh, got good English communication skills. You have given, uh, have a beautiful IELTS score. You are straight away selected as a skilled immigrant. You can do that yourself also. You need someone, some professional's help. It is, you are more than welcome. Now, business immigration is for someone who has surpassed the, surpassed the age of skilled immigration. He is not a skilled immigrant anymore. He's maybe 35, maybe 40, maybe 45, maybe 50, but he has got those managerial skills. He's an entrepreneur, maybe he was running a restaurant, maybe he was uh, a professional back home, maybe he, he was working as a CEO in a company, maybe he was working as a manager of sales in a company. But now he doesn't qualify for skilled migration because age is not at, is on his side. Maybe he is not very proficient with English. And now he wants to move because of a safer lifestyle because of a secure lifestyle because of his kids generally today we will be developing de uh, developing more on uh, business migration and not anything else Canadian business ecosystem so yes Canadian business ecosystem like I uh, earlier said it's very friendly people know uh, I mean, people know that the systems are sm so smooth there in fact I was sitting with my fr friend Slava and we were discussing how the Canadian tax policies were uh, you know so beneficial and yes, uh, like I'll give you an example, corporate taxes are uh, up to an income of 500,000, you just pay around 12 to 13, 14% taxes, which is, which is nothing. Like people are scared, people in Dubai and UAE especially, you know, they are scared of paying a lot of taxes. So this is for their information that up to 500,000 of revenue, half a million of revenue in a corporation, they just end up paying around 15, 15 more, less than 15% taxes. Entrepreneurial LMI, Startup visa program, intra-company transferee, and C11 work permit. Now, entrepreneurial LMI. Okay, we'll talk about startup visa program first. Startup visa program. It was uh, back then in 2013. This was a pilot program. Then it came. It got an official shape. Canada once upon a time saw that all the companies, all the startups, big startups from everywhere in the world, and all the good brains are going to the Silicon Valley. They realize the need of giving an ecosystem to the startups whereby someone who has a got, who's got a great idea or who has got a startup running every, uh, in, you know, in India, Pakistan, wherever, to, they, they, were, they started to invite those startups or they started to invite those people who had those ideas to come to Canada and the Canada, Canadian government would provide an ecosystem where they could work. Now as lawyers, we understood the word permanent residency. And we started looking into this program and this program, the criteria for this program is that either you have a startup idea or you have a startup running in, the, in some other country which is a qualifying startup and which is able to secure uh, support from designated entities in Canada.
Now, designated entities, who are designated entities? They are the entities which are recommended by the government of Canada. They are listed and you have to secure some support which people in this area say letter of support and uh, from these uh, entities. Now, when I say support, support is divided into three segments, incubation, angel investment, and venture capital. So the incubation, when a startup is in its initial stage, when it is just starting off, it is just launching, it probably needs an incubation from smart people who are already there in the industry. Angel investment is when the startup has already existed and there is some angel investor who's ready to invest in your startup. He commits $75,000 or more than that to invest in your startup. And for a venture capitalist to invest in your startup, you need to secure $200,000 for that or more for that. Now, a lot of people have ideas which, we, which our business establishment teams can give a shape to be able to do, uh, come into this process. A lot of people have their startups. We can obviously help them to come and see, come and secure that uh, investment from an angel investor, the designated in investor, and or the venture capitalist. So when, once you are able to do that, you are able to secure the letter of support. These are a few steps that, that uh, are involved in the process. It is, it, as, as easy it sounds, it is not that easy. But uh, so once you are able to secure that support, we are able to file your permanent residency. We are able to file your work permits. You can become an essential worker in a startup. You can become uh, non-essential. If you are a non-essential, you can probably come on a permanent residency direct straight away. You, if you are an essential, you can certainly secure a work permit to come to Canada and work in furtherance of that startup that you were a part of. So yes. Uh, this is a direct route to permanent residency. People who are in their 40s, 50s, who are looking to do something spectacular in Canada, we are there to help. Our business establishment teams are there to help you. And we will be able to get you through this route. It is one of the direct routes to permanent residency. Yes, now I come to entrepreneurial LMI. Entrepreneurial LMI, we have named this entrepreneurial LMI. Earlier it was called owner operator LMI. Owner, entrepreneurial LMI is for people who are able to start or purchase a business in Canada. Either they incorporate a new business or they purchase a new business, uh, purchase or be a part of uh, any running business in Canada. What happens is, now you are coming to invest or you are incorporating a business. You have got good managerial skills, you have got amazing experience, 4-5 year experience, 8 year experience, 10 year experience, 15 year experience. Now. You want to come and you want to secure, you have invested in Canada or you have incorporated a business in Canada and now you are wanting to move yourself. This is not that easy. Earlier it was easy when owner operator program was there. Now the business has to hire you in that business, uh, in, in, there in Canada. You are a foreigner, you have to go through the labor market drill. It is called the LMI drill, labor market impact assessment. You have to prove it to the government of Canada that fine, it is your business or you are a part of that business. You have to prove that it, your coming in, into Canada will not negatively or in fact uh, uh, not negatively impact the labor market of Canada. Proving is not that easy. You have to have a big rationale for that, uh, behind that. You have, to have, you have to prove it to the ESDSC officer, the government of Canada that you know there were candidates, there were a lot of candidates but I was the most suitable one for the same opportunity, that is why allow me to come to Canada. It is a very beautiful program because every one of you who has surpassed the age of 35, 40 has got good managerial skills. What we are trying to bring to Canada is your managerial skills. You can come on a post of a CEO, CFO, you can come as a junior manager, you can come on a NOC B, now they are called TA systems, I will explain to you later on. So you can come on any level of management that you think you are suited for. Now how we help you? We can help you in incorporating as lawyers, we, we can help you incorporate a business, we can help you buy a business, we can help you buy a franchisee, we can get into due diligence because we are lawyers again. We are there, our offices are there. We can help you with financial due diligence also. We are, uh, and if you want to partner with someone, you are most welcome to do that. If you want to incorporate your own business based on your managerial skills, we are more than happy to do that also. Our ultimate agenda is to bring you to Canada either on a work permit or on permanent residency. 
How that happens? Now, Canadian system, as we all know, works on point system. These, this entrepreneurial LMI, once you are able to secure the job from through entrepreneurial LMI, you you basically get 50 or 200 points. If you're coming on a knock double O, you are able to secure 200 points. If you're coming on a knock O, that is a mid-level manager job, you are able to secure 50 points. And if you are coming on a knock A, knock B job, you're still able to secure 50 points. Now what happens is when you are when you have a shortfall of points because your age has you know not with your side, you have uh, less education or what these things this job offer helps you through your own business or through your partnership or through your uh, investment helps you secure those points that might be the deficit so this route can lead to direct permanent residency if your name comes with that draw that express entry draw or if you are not able to secure initially you are not able to secure permanent residency you come on a work permit work in canada for one year in that same enterprise that that sponsored you basically to work in that and after a year you may qualify for a pnp or a canadian experience class so there are ways around it yes but your entry to canada is primarily secured intra company transfer program now if we go back to our entrepreneurial LMI, I told you that we have to give a big rational to the government of Canada that, you know, we have checked the labor market locally. No one as good as Mr. XYZ deserved this job. We are trying to bring him. Now, intercompany transfer is that when you don't have to go to the labor market, you don't have to prove it to the government of Canada that, you know, you want to be here, you want to uh, compete with the local market. It is an LMI exempted program. It is part of the International Mobility Program. It is also called C. 12 work permit. Now what happens is, it is good for multinationals who are willing to establish their operations in Canada. Now you have all got corporations here, most of you, or you, have, you are working for corporations that might be wanting to uh, establish their operations in Canada. So what happens is, we help you incorporating that business. Now the government of Canada wants a commitment for you that you will actively come and manage the business. If you are able to prove with a rational that you are coming there for a serious work, you have enough capital to expand your operations, you have a qualifying relationship with that enterprise, the parent company, the parent company which is willing to have a branch office and affiliate a subsidiary in Canada, the company has been into legitimate business and the company has been in existence for more than three years, that's a qualifying relationship. If you prove it to, and if you also prove the rationale that you are coming there for serious work, you have enough capital to expand your operations, your nature of work is something that people, that Canada would require, you would hire a lot of people, you would, uh, you would probably benefit the Canadian economy by employment, by revenues, everything. So, you can move without the LMI, without even giving the rationale to the government of Canada that there is someone probably a uh, substitute for you. I, yesterday I gave an example of uh, Nestle for example. Nestle Switzerland wants to establish a plant in Canada. Now it doesn't always mean that Nestle would all the time go into the labor market of locally in Canada and find a technician, find a senior management guy, or find a CEO, find a CFO in Canada. Lab Nestle would simply open an office, a subsidiary there, and would seek permission to send its officials to Canada without the labor market impact. Without, it, it bypasses that system. The best part about this is most of the times even IELTS is not required. In our history, in maybe hundreds of applications, only one person was required to do IELTS because of his education. He didn't have uh, education support uh, documents. He, he was senior secondary, so the visa officer, he said, I want IELTS score. So only one case out of hundreds of cases that we've done where IELTS score was asked. What it leads to is you get a work permit, which is renewable for seven years, up to seven years, provided each year when you go to, uh, for an extension, you prove the, your intention that you've been working in furtherance of the company that you, uh, you, uh, that you came for, work in furtherance of the job that you came for, profits and no profits, they are not detrimental. Because even the CRA or even the uh, organizations there know 
that initially you have a lot of capital investment. So first, first year or second year usually are in losses also. They don't want to see that. All they want to see is that you are actively managing the business that you came for. How is it good for business owners in Dubai? Well, business owners are working through their corporations. They are already international companies or I would say maybe fall in the category of multinationals. Now the business owner has employees, he has a good network of employees. He wants to move himself. This can be the program for them. This can be the people, this can be the program for entrepreneurs who can move vis-a-vis -vis this program. C11 work permit is a work permit for self-employed or people who have exceptional skill, who are willing to prove it to again government of Canada that we are coming to give you social, economic, or cultural benefit to any place where they want to establish a business. Obviously the threshold of this application, this is also by the way an LMI exempt program, you don't have to go through the labor market, you just have to give a good rationale that you are a serious worker, you have some exceptional skill, you have been an entrepreneur, you have been a very successful person in your field, whatever you are doing. C11 is for those people. Remember one thing, now proving it to the government that you know you are coming to do serious business either requires a lot of funds, either requires to prove the intention or you are serving an underserved country, uh, underserved uh, city or uh, province or you are also, uh, you, are pro you, you know you are showing that you generate a jo lot of jobs or you are exceptionally skilled like a musician maybe he's recognized he's, uh, he's gotten a Bharat Ratna or something, he falls into that category because he's self-employed and he's exceptionally skilled. We are doing these applications every day and they are, we are very successful in doing all this. The requirements here, whatever I've spoken, is there. How we can help you? Now there are two aspects where our law firm, our immigration firm can help you. The legal aspect. As lawyers, we are members of SELA, we are the Canadian Immigration Law, for, uh, law Association. We are constantly reading, up, updating ourselves about the industry, the growth of industry, the immigration process, because the laws are changing, they are ever evolving, like now the LMI system is transferring into tier system, training, education, experience, responsibilities. So based on that system, so we are constantly upgrading ourselves, the business aspect. We know how the financial industry is developing, how the culture of the industry is developing. We have uh, so many business plans in place. We see your profile, we check your profile, and based on that profile, we, make a, uh, we develop a business that can suit you and sponsor you to come to Canada. Then obviously government regulations, we are obviously in touch with all the government re regulations. Precautions to be taken. As you all are sitting here, you know why lawyers are needed, why lawyers or why consultants are needed. Because yes, we know the subject. Immigration is a law. Immigration is a big law. In fact, we have so many books written on it. Immigration is not a small subject. It is a diverse subject. If your cases go left, if your cases get refused, lawyers or consultants are always there to help you. Lawyers are always there to go to the highest level of court, even to go to the Supreme Court for reviews, for appeals, anything. We can handle your care, case from pin to plane. We can do everything in-house. <coughs> These are the success stories. You can always uh, visit our booth and see our success stories. Yes. We're done. <laughs> that is quick. Any questions? <laughs> Sir? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. We have the Indian nationals, but uh, I do not have a business experience. So, we work in a company that is a senior employee. So, when we are thinking of starting a business in Canada, as you mentioned, one of the programs is called Leave Me a Entrepreneur Program. Yes. So, when we go as a new business person and we are going and starting a new business in Canada, how government is helping us as a, not as a newcomer, as a new business? See, government has its its own rebates or uh, tax cuts and everything for new business owners. That is for sure. But uh, I can't go much into it, but I'll tell you. Now, you said you are a manager in a company, you don't have any business experience. But what do you have? You have managerial skills. That is what is required in a business. Now, when we incorporate a business, understand one point. A corporation is different from a shareholder or for example, you are a shareholder in that corporation that we established for you in Canada, right? You are still a different entity, legal entity, the corporation is a di different legal entity. Now what we have to prove to the government, that this person, what is your name, I'm sorry? 
Gursimran. Now, Gursimran is coming to secure a position in, in that company that we incorporated, and he's bringing certain managerial skills which no one can take from you. And he's coming to do some serious work, and we should sponsor this chap to run the business, to run the show there. You can come as a junior manager, you can, you can come at the stage of mid-level manager, depends upon your experience. You can, come also, you can also come as a CEO also, depends upon your age and your experience also. Yes, that's a trick. That's the trick. Now, I am a director in a company in India. I am, I'm sorry, I'm a shareholder in a company in India. But to be appointed as an officer in, in the same company, I need an appointment letter, I need my salary, I need to be appointed as an officer, maybe as a director, maybe as a PRO, maybe as a marketing officer. That's an appointment. A shareholder is still a different legal entity from a corporation. So a corporation, like, uh, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll explain to you later, yeah. Any other questions, please? Sir, you have a question, please. <laughs> Absolutely, sir. Absolutely. In fact, what is a branch? Branch is something that a parent company can start, right? Otherwise, there is no branch. You can't call a single branch a branch. It is always a parent company that is opening a branch in Canada. Obviously, if you have a company, we can help you opening, open a branch and the branch can sponsor you to work in Canada without even going through the LMI process. Depends upon your credentials and depends upon your parent company structure here. If the structure we think is alright, to open a branch office and if the capital threshold is also met, if you are able to uh, transfer some funds and show you know, that you are serious in doing that business, obviously we can transfer you as a ICT employee there. Yes. No, no, no. Like I told you, the parent company has to be in existence at least for three years. It can, it can be different in cases of mergers and acquisitions, like a new company can probably take over an old company. That rational can be proven. But uh, if, you, if you talk about the parent company in general, it needs to be three years in existence and the relationship of the employee or the officer or the owner with that company should be at least one year. And all this should be documented. I mean, you should be drawing some money. You should be, it should be sh uh, shown in the bank statements also that you are uh, somewhere related to that parent company, yeah? Okay. If it was uh, opening a parent company here and then, then the branch simultaneously, it becomes very difficult. I mean, then everyone would be in Canada, not here. <laughs> anything, sir, anything, anything, anything is possible. Anything. What we are trying to incorporate is your managerial skills, your background. We are trying to bring that to Canada. Nothing else. Yeah. Amazing. Yes, we would certainly show that. Yeah, we, don't, we are not here to hide anything. We are here to show everything and prove a rational that we are coming there to do some serious business. Yeah. I think then it, it suffices everything. If you have any questions, please meet our team. Please meet our team members and or visit our office. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your presence.